Hello there, it's me, Roland. Welcome to Bilingual Analytics. Today, I'm going to talk about the weather. Yeah, you heard me right, the weather. There are two reasons why I wanted to talk about this topic. First of all, when it comes to the weather, countries have been measuring lots of information about weather details for a long period of time. So historical data is readily available. On top of that, it's not up to interpretation. It's just the data that the Bureau of Meteorology shares with us. Secondly, I do believe in climate change. So as a business analyst, I felt compelled to create a nice and understandable report that you can replicate for your country or city and spread the word that climate change is a real thing. I also believe that we still have time to act and leave a green planet behind us. However, I know that we have to include more and more people and make sure that everyone can understand what's going on. As the saying goes, we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. So without further ado, let's just have a quick look at the data that we have available. I live in Sydney, Australia, so I jumped on the Australian BOM's website and looked for some historical data. Luckily, I was able to quickly find a report about the daily max temperatures. I exported all major cities from 1910 or the first year that the data is available. The format is pretty straightforward and requires very little effort to transform it into a nice table that we can manage in Power BI. Therefore, the next step was report design. As I said in a previous video, it takes time to think about the way we want to present our data to the report users. One thing is planning what sort of interactions we want from the users, but that's not enough. I strongly believe that with Power BI, we have a tool that can share a message or guide our users. So what do I mean by that? If we just dump those Excel files to our users, they won't be able to connect the dots, find the most crucial bits of information, and probably they will be overwhelmed with the data. Let's try to use design elements that they can easily understand. So the report structure is going to look similar to something that they are already familiar with. If you Google weather report images, you will find a pattern. A pattern that is probably the same all over the world. Days are following each other in a boxy shape. In the middle of the box, there is the average forecast for the day and down in the bottom, max and mean temperatures. And in most cases, you will see a summary or some sort of a news flash running on the bottom. So to replicate something similar and help users to understand the basic concept of my report, I created this background in PowerPoint. While I was preparing this, I realized what is the message that I want to share. I wanted to show that max temperatures have been increasing from the 1910s, and hopefully the data will reflect that. To dramatize the effect, adding 2050s forecast with warmer weather, dead trees and bushfires. In addition to that, to have some sort of a personalization feature in the report, I was thinking about the second page where users can type in their DOBs and see how the weather has changed since then. It sounds pretty cool, isn't it? So the second page was designed like that. As you saw already, there are not too many visuals that I planned for this report. I'm not trying to create a report that answers all questions about climate change. I just wanted to show you one way of visually presenting this topic over the last century or so. As I don't want to spend too much time on the report creation itself, let's have a look at the final result. Bilingual Analytics very first weather report. On the first page we can see average temperatures for the selected decades with highest and lowest max temperatures. Let's deep dive into those averages. If we hover over the first number, we will see that in the 1910s, the average max temperature has decreased quite significantly. However, this trend reversed in the 30s. Then the 50s on average show a slight increase to almost nothing. And from the 70s, we can see that those trend lines are rising higher and higher. 
the last decade shows an almost one degree increase. If you hover over the highest and lowest max temps, you will find the day when those temps were recorded and the temperatures in other cities. Let's slice and dice the report for Sydney. Trend is roughly the same, decreasing temperatures in the 1910s, increasing temperatures throughout the 30s, 50s, and the 70s, plateauing in the 90s, and a massive jump over the last decade. To give you a high-level overview, you can also read through the narrative in the white box, which is going to summarize exactly what happened and how the climate has changed. This is probably the most useful bit to quickly see our insights. You can also have a sneak peek at the summary table and easily identify how your city has changed compared to other major cities. But something that is probably more interesting to all of us is understanding how the climate has changed since we were born. So if we click on the report button, the second page of the report will show up. I was born in 1989, so at the bottom left corner I typed in my DOB. On the top we can see immediately that average temp before I was born was 22.4 degrees in Celsius. In 1989, the average temp was 22.6, and since then, the average temperature has increased to 23.2. The graph on the left-hand side shows us the average temps by year and a trend line. The visual on the right shows us the average temperature by station between 1989 and 2009. And to make sure that the key message goes across to the report user, we have a written summary on the bottom. It's all interactive, so feel free to explore the report. It would be a little bit weird to say that I hoped you liked this episode. So instead of that, I'm going to say that I hope you learned something new today and you will have the knowledge to replicate this report to your country or your city. Spread the word and start thinking about reducing your ecological footprint. Make our planet cool again. There is no need to reinvent the wheel. Start with something small, but plan to achieve something big. Thanks for tuning in today. Hit the like button so I know that you're keen to learn a little bit more about report design. Subscribe to the channel so you never miss a new episode. Until then, see ya!